treasury with Neanderthal remains. Spanish, Danish and Italian scientists made an unexpected discovery in a museum in Spain. The box with artifacts, which had been stored there since 1986, turned out to be a treasure trove. 54 bones and teeth of Neanderthals were found in it. These remains, discovered in the Semenia Caves near Barcelona back in the 70s by paleontology enthusiast Miguel Asner, remained unnoticed for many years. The discovery surprised the researchers. The bones belonged to three individuals, a woman and two children aged 11 and 7 years. These ancient remains are approximately 50,000 years old. Asner's collection is now recognized as the largest collection of Neanderthal remains in the northeastern Iberian Peninsula. Master of the Terracotta Army Half a century ago, a unique discovery was made. The mausoleum of the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, was found. After years of research, the ruler's last refuge remained untouched. Scientists do not dare to disturb his peace. In 1974, while farmer Yan Hifa and his brothers were digging a well at the foot of Mount Lishan, his shovel hit something hard. This something turned out to be a fragment of a clay statue. This discovery turned into a whole collection of artifacts, but the farmer was able to earn only a symbolic 10 yuan for his discovery. Archaeologists who took up the case soon discovered an army of terracotta, which is considered the guards of the grain Chen Shi Huan. But the mystery of the grave remains unsolved, because legends say that it is filled with mercury, which the emperor considered a magic elixir. Modern studies have confirmed the high concentration of this element in the burial area. Nowadays, scientists are making plans to bypass the ancient traps and get inside the grave. They are considering the possibility of using muons, subatomic particles that will help them look at what is hidden in the depth of the tomb without disturbing its peace. 2000 Seal Impressions Archaeologists have discovered in Doliha in Turkey an ancient archive with more than 2,000 seals for sealing documents. Dolihai was an important city of the Roman and Byzantine eras in northern Syria and was famous for its religious diversity. The seals depict deities important to the city, including Jupiter Dolichanus. According to scientists, this discovery provides a key to understanding the religious life of the ancient inhabitants. The remains of the archive are a massive structure made of limestone blocks indicating the presence of several floors. Petrified Book Archaeologists from Australia have stumbled upon a mysterious book-shaped artifact estimated to be more than 330 million years old. Yes, I know that not everyone likes it when I talk about thousands and millions of years. Therefore, this discovery caused a lot of controversy and speculation among scientists. Thomas Kaminsky, an antiquities researcher, claims that they found a mineralized book with a metal binding, but it is no longer possible to read it. Archaeology professor Jane Balmay was also also amazed by the find, although she expressed doubts about its antiquity. Other experts marvel at how the book's pages have survived for millions of years. Geology professor Ian Plymer explains that under certain conditions in an oxygen-free environment and under pressure, paper can petrify. Kaminsky believes that the depth at which the book was found indicates its authenticity. However, the question remains as to why the book looks like a modern copy. Could this be an artifact left behind by a time traveler? Matriarchy in Crete Scholars studying the Minoan civilization have noted that in Crete, women were portrayed as strong and influential, in contrast to men. This may indicate matriarchy in their society. The Minoans who lived on Crete were noted for their advanced art and trade, as well as the expansion of women's rights in the Bronze Age. Professor John Younger of the University of Kansas noted that women in the Minoan frescoes and pottery are depicted in luxurious clothing and jewelry, while men are presented in a simpler form. Forum. Please note that now women generally also look more attractive than men. Minoan women actively participated in social events and religious rituals, which distinguishes from traditional domestic roles. Scientists suggest that the worship of the goddess in Crete could be evidence of matriarchy. The figurines of the snake goddess in the fresco Women in Blue confirm the important role of women in Minoan culture. The presence of pools in the central places of the palaces shows that women were treated adequately during men's unlike other ancient people. The Chained Oak 
One of the most famous curses in English history is the legend of the chained oak. According to history, one dark autumn night in the 19th century, the Earl of Shrewsbury traveled in his horse-drawn carriage along an old forest road to his family estate in at Alton Towers, Staffordshire. Suddenly, they came across an elderly woman standing in the middle of the road. The lady asked the Count for money, but he cruelly rejected her, refused to help, and demanded that she get out of the roadway. Then the woman cursed the Count and his family, saying that with every branch falling from the famous old oak tree on their estate, one of his family members would die. The curse came true within a few hours, when one of the Count's family members unexpectedly died, shortly after an overnight storm tore a branch from an oak tree. This convinced the Count of the reality and power of the curse. He ordered his servants to chain the branches of the tree to prevent them from falling. Until now, the venerable old oak tree remains in its old rusty chains. Tomb of Saranput I Saranput I, the no March elephantine during the 12th dynasty, also left behind a formidable message on the walls of his tomb. Its purpose was to protect the offerings intended for the god whose statue was located inside the tomb. The inscription speaks of severe consequences for those who dare to touch these sacred gifts. Whoever enroaches on them will suffer terrible torment, his hand will be cut off like a bull's, his neck will be twisted like a bird's, he will lose his position, his son will not have any position, he will have no home in Nubia, no grave in the necropolis, his god will reject his bread, his flesh and the flesh of his children will be consigned to fire, the corpse will not find peace on earth. I will pursue him like a crocodile in the waters, a snake on the earth and like an enemy in the necropolis. Thus, he even the most daring archaeologist should think twice before visiting this tomb, because the spirit of Serenpet I may begin to hunt for them. Corpse for Damnation why were curses placed in tombs in ancient times? Often, the deceased and the performer of the ritual did not know each other. The dead man's body served only as means to transmit the curse to the forces of the underworld, who then carried it out. There is evidence from the 4th century BC for that some practitioners believed that the spirit of the deceased remaining near the grave after burial could perform a curse. In both cases, the dead were seen as agents capable of influencing the curse, being intermediaries to subterranean forces were active forces in their own right, capable of interfering in the affairs of the living. Of particular interest in curse rituals were certain types of disease whose souls were considered especially restless and changeable. The graves of such people were especially suitable for supernatural use. These included people who died before term, for example, infants, children, women who died before childbirth, and those who died from violence. For both groups, sudden death meant that they left unfulfilled without living through the standard their life cycle. Their spirits were especially outraged and thirsty for revenge. On the island of Paros, a child's grave was found with a tin figurine pierced with seven iron nails, his hands behind his back, his neck in a tin noose. On the figurine was the name of the person, Theophrastus. Tomb of Hakaf Hakaf, the famous Egyptian traveler of the 6th dynasty, also did not remain aloof from the fashion of leaving curses in tombs. In his last refuge, he left an extensive inscription in which he told about his travels and knowledge about another life. But at the same time, he included in the inscription a stern warning for anyone who dares to disturb his eternal peace. The curse goes like this, I will seize you like a wild bird and bring you to justice, and you will be judged by the great god himself. For a modern person, such words may not seem very scary, but for the ancient Egyptians, this was a real curse that it was better not to mess with. During the Pyramid Age, being cursed by the great god was considered one of the most terrible curses. Ancient Bowl in the Garage in the UK's Cotswold region, a couple found an antique bowl in their garage and asked an antiques expert for an appraisal. They were surprised to learn that the bowl was an ancient Chinese artifact from the Qin Dynasty, dating back to the 17th century. Made from rhinoceros horn, this cup was used for libations in religious ceremonies and could serve as an aphrodisiac. Experts date the bowl to the end of the 17th or beginning of the 18th century. It is planned to be auctioned by Hansa's auctioneers with an estimate 
of three five thousand pounds. Such bowls were a symbol of victory and were used in ceremonies among Chinese scholars. Not only did they have cultural significance, but they were also considered magical. The horn could change color, warning of poison in the drink. This find is of great historical and cultural value, demonstrating the complexity and grandeur of ancient Chinese traditions. Cobblestones for thousands of dollars on the banks of the Yangtze lies the small village of Hejiaba in Sichuan province, China. There is no oil or fertile land here, but there is something more valuable – beautiful river cobblestones. These stones bring millions of dollars to the villagers every year. In Hejiaba, every resident from a young age learns to distinguish valuable stones from ordinary ones. The work is not easy. It is mainly done by strong men, as large cobblestones are valued. They sell about $3 million worth of stones a year. During the dry season, the river recedes, revealing a 10-kilometer-long beach where rocks accumulate. The uniqueness of local cobblestones lies in their patterns and veining. Some resemble paintings or geometric patterns. The village has both skilled stone appraisers and those who hope to get lucky by collecting anything unusual. Even the resellers are present, buying up lucky finds from less experienced residents. Notable among the finds was the hard road of shoe stone, which sold for $15,500. Hajiab's success has encouraged neighboring villages to also search for stones, but locals are confident in the uniqueness of their cobblestones. The village's popularity among tourists and Chinese people wanting to buy stones is growing. For local residents, stones have become a part of life. Every house has a decoration made from especially beautiful cobblestones found on the river. This has become part of a local tradition, surprising those who are used to other home decorations. According to local legend, it all started many years ago, when a passing couple saw a beautiful stone in a peasant's house and wanted to buy it. Thus began the era of trade in Hajiaba's unique stones. The importance of the wheel Modern civilization would look very different without the ancient invention of the wheel. The exact time and place of its invention are still a matter of debate. The wheel was probably invented independently by different civilizations at different times. The simplicity of the wheel suggests that it could have appeared even in cultures that did not seem to need it. The first evidence of the wheel dates back to 4,500 to 3,300 BC in Mesopotamia, where it was used in the form of a potter's wheel. Early transport wheels were made from solid planks of wood. Improvements in wheel design occurred around 2200 to 1550 BC in the Middle Bronze Age, when spoke wheels and chariots appeared. Nowadays, a wheel is necessary for almost all types of transport, not just land transport. Airplanes use wheels to take off and land, and most helicopters are also equipped with wheels. Even magnetic levitation maglev systems have folding wheels for slow movement. The wheel plays an important role not only in transport, without gear wheels and years, we might still be in the Dark Ages. Fossil 15 million years old Amelie Bzdek, a volunteer at the Calvert Maritime Museum, discovered a unique fossil of a dolphin-like creature that lived about 15 million years ago on a beach in Maryland, USA. The discovery was made while walking along the beach, where the woman found a part of the skull measuring 76 centimeters long and weighing about 23 kilograms. Stephen Groff, a museum employee, examined the fossil and identified it as an extinct species of marine animal similar to dolphins dolphins that lived in the sea that covered Maryland millions of years ago. These creatures had an expanded rostrum for hunting and reached a length of 3.5 to 4.5 meters. They lived during the Miocene era, 12-20 million years ago. The reasons for their disappearance remain unknown. The fossil skull will be on display at the Calvert Maritime Museum, where scientists will continue to study it. This bread has been baked for 43,000 years. Evidence has been found in Australia that the Aborigines baked bread long before the Egyptians, more than 34,000 years ago. The discovery of millstones in New South Wales reveals an ancient tradition of flower making. The Aborigines, known as hunter gatherers, also practiced agriculture. The women collected seeds from a variety of plants, including native grasses and spinifex, sometimes even from ant nests. 
flower was crowned on millstones, some of which are up to 50,000 years old. The resulting flour was turned into dough and baked into nutritious bread, an important element of the Aboriginal diet. With the arrival of European and the introduction of white flour, traditional baking methods almost disappeared, but today there is a renewed interest in these ancient techniques and the culinary heritage of Aboriginal Australia. Mummification of Meat Many people have heard about King Tutankhamun, but not many know that he was buried with 48 boxes of beef and poultry. In order to provide food for the pharaoh in the afterlife, his funeral preparations included food supplies. A new study by archaeologists reveals interest in burial customs of ancient Egypt. It turns out that the meat that was buried with the pharaohs was mummified, treated with special bombs for preservation. This meat, called meat mummies, was common in Egyptian funerals, with the oldest examples dating back to more than 5,000 years ago and the earliest to 1,600 years ago. The latest study involved the analysis of four samples of meat mummies dated between 1386 and 948 BC, which were found in the tombs of high-ranking figures. Meats included cattle ribs, veal, and goat. Scientists conducted a chemical analysis of the meat and the bandages with which it was wrapped. They found that animal fat was used to coat goat and calf bandages, indicating its use as a preservative. However, the ribs of the cattle contained the remains of a complex balm of fat or oil and resin from the pistachia tree, which was a luxury in ancient Egypt. About 600 years later, after being used in the mummification of meat, this balm was used for human mummies. Ancient Roman Phallus with Wings in Serbia, in the east of the country, archaeologists stumble upon an unusual Roman artifact. The find is a tintinabulum, wind bell, decorated with a phallus. This artifact, discovered on the porch of a house in the ancient city of Vimanasium, is one of the rare and valuable monuments of Roman history. Tintinabulums were traditionally hung near doors as magical protection for homes and shops. The artifact found was the second of its kind in the ruins of Vimanasium, and its peculiarity is that it was completely completely preserved. Made from bronze, the tintinabulum is now preserved in the ground. Its unique configuration includes a magical phallus with wings, legs, and a tail, known as a fascinum. The symbol of the phallus in Roman culture was associated not only with eroticism, but also with good luck, it was considered a powerful amulet against the evil eye, and was used to attract prosperity and protection from thieves. Tintinabulums are part of the apotropaic amulets, which were intended to ward off evil forces and provide protection. Such objects were widespread in the Roman world and could take the most unexpected forms. Ivory Dyes Archaeologists from India discovered unique rectangular ivory dice at an excavation site in Kijadi, Sivaganga district. These dice served as a source of entertainment for the upper class of society in ancient times. This is the first time that a rectangular dice has been discovered at Kijadi, while cubic dice were found during previous excavations. Archaeologists from Tamil Nadu clarified that the dice was found at a depth of 30-40 cm. Its dimensions are 4.5 cm in length, 0 0.9 cm in height and 0.9 cm in thickness. On the four sides of the dice, there are signs indicating the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. In Tamil literature, this dice is known as Pagadaikai, which means four sided dice. Radiocarbon dating of coal discovered at Kijadi in 2017 showed that there had been a settlement here since 200 BC, proving that urban civilization existed in Tamil Nadu as early as the Sangam era. Giant Sword from Japan Japan has a unique sword that is believed to have been forged during the Edo period. Measuring 465 centimeters in length and weighing 75 kilograms, it is recognized as the largest Japanese sword in the country. This sword was donated to the Hanaoka Hachiman Shrine in 1859 during a ceremony honoring the imperial monument by admirers who shared the views of imperial patriots like Yoshida Shoin. The sword was forged with the hope that it would ward off evil and demons and help create a bright, clean, and peaceful society. The sword is kept in the treasury of Hanaoka Hachiman Shrine and is not usually on public display. However, it can be seen accompanied by a special guide by appointment. Medieval Game Item 
in Bedfordshire, England, archaeologists have discovered a game piece from the Middle Ages. This object, about 6 cm in diameter, is made from the lower jaw of a livestock. Its front side is decorated with concentric circles and a ring and dot design. These types of tiles were used in board games where players roll dice and move the tiles along the marks. Such a game was popular among the Romans and was called Ludus Duodecim Scripturium. The term tablet comes from the Latin tabula, which means board. Archaeologists note that it is difficult to determine which game the found chips belong to due to the lack of preserved game boards, but the connection with the site and the style of decoration suggests that the piece was used for the game of tablets in the Middle Ages. Accidental find on the school playground in England, in Brownstone, a 13-year-old school student made an amazing discovery while walking in the schoolyard. At first, she saw the find was an ordinary five pence coin, but it soon became clear that it was a real treasure dating from the reign of William the Conqueror around 1069. This unique treasure was found by accident. Earlier, workers were replacing a lamppost on the school grounds and probably dug it to the surface. The girl found an object that seemed like an ordinary coin and showed it to the history teacher. He started started looking for information on it and immediately realized that they had found something truly ancient. Experts from Leicestershire County Council confirmed the authenticity of the find. It appears that at the time the coin was in use, the site of the present school was either farmland or woodland, with a nearby road linking Leicester to other cities. For a farmer or worker, losing such a coin would mean a great loss, because it was of great value. Treasures of Atlantis under the Sphinx Egyptologist Roman Arahav, a member of the International Association of Egyptologists, spoke about the low probability of discovering secret holes and treasures of Atlantis under the Egyptian pyramids. He recalled that the pyramids have been studied for centuries, and if there was something there, scientists would have found it long ago. The theme of secret chambers under the pyramids and the Sphinx at Giza arose thanks to the American mystic Edgar Case in the early 20th century, and although excavations have been attempted in the past, nothing similar has been discovered. Now the Egyptian authorities prohibit such research, which confirms the absence of hidden rooms. The Egyptologist also focuses on the difference in the concept of treasure with modernity and the past. For the ancient Egyptians, who lived in conditions where the main clothing was loincloth, modern ideas about treasures do not correspond to reality. Separately mentioned is the theory of Egyptologist Farouk al Bas about the natural origin of the Great Sphinx. Construction expert Fyodor Vasilyev considers it's logical, noting that the the main material of the sculpture is limestone, which in itself is not very durable. In his opinion, erosion could only form general outlines, and further detailing was carried out by ancient craftsmen. I told you about this in the previous video. Production of Prehistoric Weapons Archaeologists from the Israel Antiquities Authority have revealed amazing finds from Enishur and Anzipora, dating back to 5800-4500 BC. They discovered hundreds of sling stones that amazed researchers with their identical sizes. All of them were 52 mm long and about 32 mm wide and weighed 60 grams. Experts believe that this indicates large-scale weapons production in the southern Levant region. The the stones had a biconical shape, ensuring accuracy and efficiency of throwing. This is the first time that so many stones have been discovered in one place, indicating joint preparation for conflict and a transition from individual to mass production of weapons during the Chalcolithic period. Oldest Working Compass Archaeologists from the Estonian Maritime Museum have revealed details of recent finds at the excavation site of a medieval merchant ship in Tallinn. The ship, discovered a year ago, is perfectly preserved and reveals the secrets of the past. A particularly valuable find was one of the oldest magnetic compasses in Europe with a dry card, which is unique since the sensitive elements of compasses are usually in liquid. Also found on board were antique tools, worn leather shoes, a wooden spoon and the remains of two ship rats, which were surprisingly well preserved. The remains of the ship were found near the Estonian Harjapea River. At first, it was assumed that these were the remains of a cog, the main Hanseatic merchant ship, but the presence of a second mast indicates a possible transitional type between the cog and the hulk. Turtle figurine 
In England, near the village of Wickham Skeet in Suffolk, researchers with metal detectors discovered a copper figurine of tortoise dating back to ancient Rome. This figurine, measuring 3 by 3 centimeters, did not have any fascinants, which indicates its possible belonging to a set of similar products. Experts dated to the beginning of the 2nd century AD, and similar finds were made in Colchester. The figurine features a typical tortoise shell with a worn top and a decorative patterns. Although one of the figurine's legs and tail is damaged, its head and other limbs are well preserved. In the ancient Roman period, turtles were associated with Mercury, the god of trade and travel. They were used in the making of lyres, musical instruments associated with Mercury. There is also a version about the connection of turtles with Sabazias the Phrygian and Thracian god healer. Stone more valuable than gold In 2015, in Australia's Maryborough Park, David Hole found a red-brown stone thinking it was gold. He tried to break it with a sledgehammer and drill a hole, but was unable to do so. Three years later, he took it to the Melbourne Museum. Geologist Henry and Birch identified it as a 4.6 billion-year-old meteorite. They were impressed by its appearance and heaviness. The meteorite turned out to be an ordinary H5 chondrite containing crystals and a lot of iron. The researchers noted that such meteorites help study space by indicating the age and composition of the solar system. Some even contain stardust older than the meteorites themselves. Radiocarbon dating showed that the meteorite landed on Earth approximately 100-1000 years ago. Why do you think meteorites are so rarely found on Earth despite their abundance in space? Traces of an unknown ancient tribe during the expedition, Siberian archaeologists from the Siberian Federal University discovered previously unknown artifacts of ancient tribes who lived in the Krasnoyarsk territory at the turn of the new era. Students and teachers found remains of housing, pottery with unique designs, clay jewelry, buttons, beads and a unique glass bead with gold foil from the Roman Empire. Iron arrowheads and the remains of fireplace, which were of economic importance, were also found. An important find was production site for blacksmithing dating back to the 3rd 4th centuries AD, which indicates the end of the Great Migration of people. These finds, according to archaeologists, indicate the Azavsky cultural period, where blacksmithing was the main occupation. Prehistoric Cemetery in the Arctic Finnish archaeologists have discovered an ancient cemetery six and a half years old, 80 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle. It turned out to be three times larger than previously expected and is one of the largest in Europe. Due to the acidity of the soil, no human remains were preserved, but researchers found that about 120 people were buried here. Early excavations at Tiny Arrow, Lapland, in the 1980s and 1990s revealed about 40 graves. However, recent work in 2018 showed that there were March more burials. Archaeologist Aki Hakonen noted that the Stone Age graves often contain red ochre, which is in short supply at Tiny Arrow. Ochre was used in the Neolithic for rituals, including burials. Although ochre was found in only 23 pits at Tiny Arrow, the shape of the pits suggests they were graves. Some of them contained ash and coal, which may indicate their use as hearth. Hakonen says new soil samples could be analyzed for the presence of fossilized hair, and chemical analysis, including extracting ancient DNA from soil, Will, could provide unique results and new insights into Stone Age society. Wooden Scooter Chikudu. And finally, a little about ancient technologies in the modern world. The Chikudu wooden scooter, originally made in 1972 in Angola by the Portuguese Pedro Saracayo, has become an, an integral part of life in the Congo. This homemade vehicle, created from scrap materials, quickly gained popularity among the local population due to the possibility of individual modification and adaptation to personal needs. In Congo, one of the world's most disadvantaged countries with a population of over 70 million, where the economy depends on extraction of minerals, particularly cobalt, Chukudu has become an indispensable assistant. In the absence of quality roads and the availability of cars, Chukudu is used as a taxi, personal vehicle, and even for transporting goods. The simplicity of the design of Chukudu for the manufacture of which durable wood species such as mamba or eucalyptus are used makes it reliable and affordable. At the same time, the production of such scooters in the Congo is quite widespread, with many workshops 
shops offering their production and maintenance. The price of Chikoru varies from $150 and depends on the buyer's requirements and financial capabilities, while more expensive models are reinforced with used car tires and shock absorbers. Manufacturers provide a guarantee for Chikoru, which is up to 150,000 kilometers or three years of operation. The load capacity of these scooters reach 500 kilograms, and some models can withstand larger loads, depending on their size. Chikuru has also taken its place in Congolese sporting culture. Scooter racing attracts many spectators and has official government support. And in the province of Goma, in recognition of the importance of Chikuru, a monument was erected, paying tribute to the hard-working residents who use this unique transport. I think that our ancestors used similar transport many thousands of years ago, although it's creepy that while some choose the interior upholstery color for their Mercedes, other ride scooters like these. Ancient Jewish Curses in ancient times, on Mount Ebal in Israel, archaeologist Adam Zertel discovered a lead tablet dating back to the mid-13th century BC. Recently, an international team of scientists, including Czech specialists, revealed the mystery of this tablet using X-ray tomography. Daniel Vavrek, a participant in the study, said the text was written on a lead sheet, which was then folded to hide the contents. The size of the plate is extremely small, only 2 cm in length and width. Previously, similar finds were opened mechanically, but this led to their damage. The new method made it possible to decipher the text without harming the artifact. Researchers have determined that the hidden text is written in Proto-Hebrew and dates back to approximately 1400-1200 BC, making it the oldest known text in this language. The text contained ancient curses, one of them read, You're cursed by the god YWH, Yahweh. This discovery is of great value for history and archaeology, proving the deep roots of written culture in this region. Mastabas in the Necropolis of Saqqara the ancient Egyptians, famous for their majestic pyramids, also built mastabas, truncated tombs. More than 160 such funerary structures containing embalmed mummies were discovered in Saqqara. Not all of these tombs contain grim inscriptions, but some contain brightly colored hieroglyphs warning burglars. Archaeologists claim that those who dare to invade these sacred spaces will suffer the wrath of the gods. According to one prediction, the gods will punish violators by twisting their necks like geese promising a painful end. One such curse can be found in the Mastaba of Kentucky Ehehe, which states, Those who enter this tomb with unclean intentions, I will grab them by the neck like a bird, I will fill their hearts with fear. Tholus's Gold an ancient treasure is considered one of the most famous cursed objects in history. 2,000 years ago, the ancient French city of Toulouse, known to the Romans as Toulouse, was home to the Gallic Volca tribes. When the Toulouse Golds returned home from campaigning and plundering in the eastern Mediterranean, they found the Romans welcoming them, lured by the huge reserves of gold they had brought with them. It is said that this loot was cursed and the Romans who took possession of the gold were never seen or heard from again. The treasure is rumored to still be out there somewhere, with many claiming it lies at the bottom of a lake in the south of France. However, treasure seekers fear the fate that could befall those who dare to rescue it. Ancient Jar with Curses Archaeologists have discovered a 2,300-year-old clay pot in Greece containing the bones of a butchered chicken that was apparently used as part of a curse to paralyze and kill 55 people in Athens. This find sheds light on the use of magic in ancient Greece. Ancient Greek curse tablets, or thin sheets of lead containing spells against a specific person, were common. They were often buried on the ground by those who wanted to curse another person. Lead signs were often made with nails to make make holes. Also in this case, a large iron nail was pierced through the pot containing the bones. The archaeologists indicated that all of the outer surfaces of the pot were covered with tags with more than 55 names. The nails symbolically limited the abilities of the victims of the curse. Archaeologists have determined that the chicken was slaughtered as a part of a ritual. It is suggested that those who used the magic wanted to transfer the bird's helplessness and inability to defend itself onto those they cursed. The researchers explained that 
that the chicken's unscrewed head and pierced lower limbs suggested that the corresponding body parts of the 55 unfortunate people would also be affected. According to Lamont, the pot's location in the building used by artisans could mean the curse was related to workplace conflict. At the time, Athens and the surrounding area experienced political upheaval after the death of Alexander the Great. Curses Text Curses written on clay shards in the shape of a human figure date back to around the 24th to 22nd centuries BC. These ancient texts, executed in the form of various hieroglyphs, served as a kind of magical protection against the enemies of Egypt. The Egyptians wrote down the names of their opponents on fragments of dishes and brought punishment on them, cursing them to the seventh generation. After this, fragments of objects were broken and buried in the ground or left in places intended for rituals. These curses could contain cruel wishes, such as killing enemies with a knife or spear and other types of painful death. Tomb of Anxifi Anxifi, a nomarch of ancient Egypt who lived around 2100 BC, left behind a unique legacy. Although his status was below Pharaoh, Anxifi was careful to leave an ominous warning on the walls of his tomb. It says that any ruler who enroaches on his tomb will be rejected by the falcon god Chemon. In addition, a curse will fall on the descendants of the offender, predicting them the lost inheritance. Modern archaeologists who examined the tomb were not afraid of these predictions, but it it seems that even robbers in ancient times did not dare to touch the last refuge of Antifi. Ancient Conical Tombs in the Chapultepec Forest, archaeologists from the National Institute of Archaeology and History of Mexico made a unique discovery. They discovered 10 ancient truncated conical tombs, estimated to be 3,000 years old, dating from the periods from 2,500 to 400 BC. These burials, which resemble upside-down cut cones, are often called bottle tombs or bell tombs. Their diameter varies from 1 to 2 meters, with a maximum height of 1.5 meters. In five of them, human remains were found, including four women and one man, placed in a bent position. Interestingly, burials in rectangular boxes were discovered above the tombs, indicating a long history of the village up to the classical period. Among the finds, archaeologists also discovered funeral offerings, deer antlers, concave convex bowls, fragments of slate discs, female figurines, as well as schematic figurines called ghosts. This discovery throws light on the ancient burial customs and culture of the people who lived in this region more than 3,000 years ago. Modern Sot Urine Excavations In Turkey, in the city of Korem, archaeologists discovered a unique saw about 2,250 years old, on the side of the capital of the ancient Hittite Empire. The tool, the first of its kind and strikingly similar to a modern saws, was found by a team led by Andreas Schachner of the German Archaeological Institute. The saw was discovered in the ruins of a building that matches the age of the artifact. It is surprised that in its appearance and characteristics the ancient saw is practically no different from modern tools. About 20 centimeters long, it was found on a slope where a large palace group of buildings is located. This find was the first discovered instrument of its kind from the 3rd century BC in the Roman world. Mysterious objects that are 130,000 years old Archaeological discoveries in the Racibors region of Poland have shed light on the activities of Neanderthals more than 130,000 years ago. For two years, an international team of specialists, including from the Universities of Wroclaw and the University of Silesia, as well as the Czech Academy of Sciences, carried out research, planning to study the geological structure of the area. Professor Andrei Wisniewski noted that the discovery of the stone tools was an unexpected gift. Artifacts found 10 meters underground in sediments formed during the last ice age show that Neanderthals visited the area and left traces of their presence here. Archaeologists have emphasized the uniqueness of some tools, which have double-sided asymmetrical cutting surfaces, reminiscent of modern broad-bladed knives. These tools may have been used for specific tasks, such as butchering, and analogues of such objects are rare at other ancient sites north of the Carpathians and the Alps. The Gazan Pyramid in Kazakhstan 
In 2016, in the wide open spaces of the Karaganda region of Kazakhstan, archaeologists discovered something incredible – Sebegazan Pyramid, a stepped structure that may open a new chapter in Turkey history. This construction, belonging to the Scythian Saka culture, is part of the Begazi Dandibai civilization which flourished in the Bronze Age. The pyramid, rising on Karazartas Hill on the left bank of the Teldenor, just 90 kilometers from Karaganda, became the last refuge for the leader of the social of the local nomads. Research has shown that its age ranges between the 12th and 14th centuries BC. Artifacts found inside speak of the turbulent history of the steps, from metal exports to religious rituals, which together lead us to the emergence of statehood in these places. The proto-urban settlement of Kent, near which sacrificial altars were found, indicates deep connection with the Karasuk culture and even with ancient Mesopotamia. How the Sphinx was built. A research team from New York University has identified the importance of climatic factors in the creation of the magnificent ancient Egyptian monument, the Great Sphinx. Researchers suggest that the Sphinx may have originally formed naturally as a yardang, a relief shape shaped by the wind and was then improved by humans. To confirm this hypothesis, laboratory experiments were carried out, simulating the climatic conditions of the era of the construction of the Sphinx four and a half thousand years ago. The team used clay mixed with a stronger material material and exposed it to water flow, simulating erosion caused by wind. As a result, it was possible to recreate a structure whose outlines were similar to the shape of the sphinx, where a more durable inclusion symbolized the head, neck, and paws of the animal. Scientists say their discovery provides a new, relatively simple theory for the appearance of natural formations similar to the sphinx, and reminds that similar landforms resembling animals are found in the modern world. The Roman Emperor Became a Woman there are many stories about the reign of the Roman Emperor Helia Gabalus, who reigned from 218 to 222 AD. The North Hertfordshire Museum in Hitchin, UK, which houses a coin associated with the emperor, has decided to use the feminine pronoun she when referring to Helia Gabalus. This is based on the records of the Roman historian Dia Cassius, who claimed that the emperor preferred female address. Do not call me master, for I am a lady, said Helia. Gabalus, according to Cassius. However, there is an opinion that Cassius Dion was biased towards the emperor and deliberately distorted his description. References to makeup and other aspects of Heliogabalus's appearance may have been deliberately exaggerated to undermine his authority. Many historical sources about the emperor make comments about the dubiousness and provocative information about him. What do you think about this? Which famous ancient character will modern historians change gender? Write your opinion in the comments under the video. UFO on the cover of an 18th century book the discovery of an image of a UFO on the cover of a book by Johann Funk, published in 1716, has caused widespread controversy among ufologists. This image, depicting a classic flying saucer surrounded by bright lightning, is seen by many as confirmation that aliens visited Earth as early as 300 years ago. Despite controversy over whether alien visits actually occurred in the 1700s, the find confirms that people of the time were also interested in the idea of extraterrestrial civilizations. As always, people are divided into types. Some believe in UFOs, others are skeptical about such assumptions. Ufologists wonder about the technological development of aliens. Assuming that they actually visited Earth in the 18th century, how did their technology remain unchanged for three centuries? This refers to the shape of an alien ship. Treasures in the Oldest Tomb in southwestern China, archaeologists have discovered an intact tomb from the Western Han Dynasty in Wulan District, Chongqing Municipality. The tomb found during rescue excavations before the construction of a hydroelectric dam on the Wujian River contained more than 600 valuable objects made of wood, bamboo, ceramics, and bronze dating back to 193 BC. This discovery became an important testimony to the history and culture of that time. The tomb was flooded for most of the year, which contributed to its preservation and protection 
protection from destruction and looting. According to project leader Huan Wei, studying the artifacts will provide new insight into the life of people in this region about 2000 years ago. For example, the discovered jade dishes indicate the high social status of the owner of the tomb. The discovery is being compared to finds in Shandong province, where more than 110 tombs from the period between the Jin and Ken dynasties have been excavated. Some of the tombs contain items made of gold, silver, bronze and ceramics, as well as frescoes from the Yuan dynasty, with traditional Chinese patterns symbolizing prosperity. Lost Tudor Palace in Northamptonshire, England, a group of amateur archaeologists from the Cully Weston Historic Preservation Society have found the remains of a Tudor palace that was destroyed more than 400 years ago. The team, including people of different ages, began the search in 2018 using local stories. After conducting geophysical research and ground-penetrating radar, amateur archaeologists discovered the walls of the palace. After receiving permission to excavate in private gardens, historians from the University of York helped identify the palace. Archaeologists are planning further research in 2024 to study the architectural style and history of the palace. The Tudor Palace, famous in the 15th century, is associated with a number of historical events, including the visit of Margaret Tudor and Henry VIII. The last war was Elizabeth I in 1566. Since the middle of the 17th century, the palace fell into disrepair, and until recently, little was known about it. Perfectly Preserved Cave of Ancient People in the Spanish province of Cantabria, archaeologists have discovered a 16,800-year-old dwelling in the La Garma cave complex. The site is famous for its Paleolithic wall paintings and its significance for paleoanthropology. Inside the cave, 4,600 artifacts were found, including stone and bone tools, furs, needles, proto-harpoons, mollusk shells, decorative pendants, and bones of deer, horses, and bison. The dwelling is described as one of the best-preserved Paleolithic dwellings in the Worlds. It is an oval space outlined by stone blocks and stalemites supporting the frame of sticks and skins. To examine the dwelling without violating its integrity, non-invasive methods were used. Continuous tomography, 3D mapping, molecular genetic analysis of soils and objects, mass spectrometry, hyperspectral imaging. Thanks to these methods, it was possible to preserve historical treasures while studying the site of, of national significance. The discovery provides insight into the daily life and cultural characteristics of a society that lived nearly 17,000 years ago. UFO in the USSR At the end of the USSR and after its collapse, UFOs became a frequent topic of discussion. Residents regularly reported strange objects in the sky, special shows were shown on television, and urban myths circulated among people. Some UFO evidence involved secret missile tests that the general public was unaware of. In the 70s 80s, stories about UFOs spread in the USSR. There were legends about a UFO crash in Yakutia in the 70s, a UFO explosion on the Kola Peninsula in 1981, and its destruction by a nuclear installation in Kazakhstan in 1983. Another story tells about mushroom pickers who allegedly photographed the interior of a flying saucer and then their traces were lost. There are even photographs that suppose supposedly prove a UFO crash in the USSR, but upon closer examination, they raised doubts. Soviet UFOs were more likely a manifestation of gnosis rather than evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations. There have also been cases in the United States when UFOs were caught on video, including those filmed by the military. For example, in July 2019, an unidentified object was spotted near the USS Omaha. The Pentagon suggests that UFOs may be of extraterrestrial origin. Even astronauts on the ISS observed strange objects, but often these turn out to be satellites. In the United States, there is laser equipment capable of creating plasma images that are sometimes mistaken for UFOs. But even with all these explanations, some cases remain a mystery. What do you think is really behind the UFO phenomena? Fantasy, technology, or something else? Eternal Guard of Pompeii this plaster cast recreates the tragic picture of a dog that died in 79 during the eruption of Vesuvius in Pompeii. A collar with spikes on the animal's neck indicates that the dog was a guard and remained at his post until the very end. Created using the methods of Italian archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli, the cast was obtained by filling with plaster the woods left in the ashes after the death of animals and people. This is how many other prints were found in the city. The guard dog was discovered in 1874 in the ruins of the house of a local rich man, Marcus Vizonius Prima, owner of a folding shop. 
Interestingly, on the threshold of this house, they found a mosaic depicting a dog similar to the remains found. During the eruption, panic-stricken people did not think about the fate of the animals. The dog, tied to a chain, tried to escape but died from asphyxia, strangled by its own chain. He, like all the inhabitants, buildings and Pompeii itself, was buried under a thick layer of ash for almost 2,000 years. This is not the only dog found in Pompeii. They were often close to people, serving as guards, shepherds, and faithful companions, just as they do today. Trilobites may reveal the history of the ancient world. Trilobites, ancient marine arthropods, disappeared from the face of the Earth about 250 million years ago, but their fossils continue to reveal the secrets of the ancient world. Scientists from Thailand have discovered 10 new species of trilobites in the Kantarata region, dating back to the late Cambrian era, about 490 million years ago. One of the species was even named after the Thai princess Mahachakri Serenhorn. These fossils were found in Tuf, a rock formed by a volcanic eruption. Scientists used radioisotope techniques to analyze the zircon contained in the tuff and determined the age of these layers to be 497-485 million years. These finds are key to understanding the Cambrian era, which until now has remained poorly understood. In addition, 12 more species of trilobites, already known in other parts of the world but found for the first time in Thailand, were discovered, providing new information about the history of the ancient supercontinent Gondwana. Tough analysis not only helps determine the age of fossils, but can also provide new insights into the history of other regions, including China, Australia, and North America. According to geologist Shelley Wernett, these fossils are a record of evolutionary change that allows us to better understand the processes taking place on the planet today. Aliens on the Walls Archaeologists working at the Swaga Swaga Nature Reserve in Tanzania made the astonishing discovery of 52 previously unknown rock shelters in 2018, many of which contained ancient rock art. However, most of the drawings were lost due to weathering. Of those that have survived, the most interesting were the anthropomorphic figures with unusually large hats. Particularly noteworthy was the shelter called Amakahi 4. On its walls, scientists discovered a well-preserved frieze depicting anthropomorphic creatures with buffalo hats. These drawings may be key to understanding similar figures found elsewhere. Dating the Amakahi Panel 4 has proven challenging, but it is believed to be at least several hundred years old. The walls of the shelter are painted red with the exception of five white figures. Based on the weathering of the pigment and the lack of depictions of domestic animals, scientists suggest that the drawings may be very ancient and date back to the hunter-gatherer period. Interestingly, similar figures with large hats were found in other rock shelters in the Kondora region. In all images, the figures have the same placement and direction of their hands, although with some differences in detail. This suggests that such figures played an important role in the culture of the ancient inhabitants of this region. Scientists are turning to the Sandawe culture of the region for answers to these mysterious paintings. Some rock paintings are still used by local people for rituals, which can help in revealing their meanings. Tomb of Hesira Mastaba Hasira, located in Saqqara, became the final resting place for a high-ranking official from the times of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. This burial site, like many other Egyptian tombs, is decorated with hieroglyphic inscriptions telling the story of the life of Hasira. But the peculiarity of these inscriptions is that after the biographical part, they turn into a short but powerful curse. If anyone enters here having committed unworthy acts or after intimacy with women, then he will be judged with me at the meeting of the great god. Despite the many years that have passed since the creation of this curse, we hope that it has not brought harm to any modern researcher or visitor to this ancient tomb. Curse of the Vampire in the depth of the Andes, among ancient ruins, archaeologists stumble upon an unusual burial. The crypt, similar to the grave of a vampire, has been hiding a secret for centuries. The body, covered with strange symbols, lay in an untouched coffin, and next to it was a set of pointed objects made of stone and bone. Local legends speak of an ancient sorcerer who, in the guise of a vampire, frightened the inhabitants. According to legend, his spirit still wanders the ruins, seeking a victim 
him to avenge the disturbance of his world. Legend claims that whoever dares to disturb the script will fall under its bloody curse. From the moment this burial was opened, strange events began to occur. Researchers encounter strange diseases and unpleasant accidents, reinforcing fear and superstition among the local population. Such a burial challenges many archaeological beliefs about the ancient civilizations of Peru and opens a new page in the study of Andean rituals and beliefs. Today, archaeologists and historians are trying to unravel the mystery of this place, trying to separate truth from fiction, reality from mysticism, despite the fact that legends about vampires originated far from South America. Ruins of the Liangzhu the Chinese Cultural Heritage Administration has announced new archaeological discoveries in the ancient city of Liangzhu and its water supply system. These finds provided new information about the three phases of Liangzhu's development, from scattered settlements through the creation of a water supply system to the construction of the city itself. Located in the Zhejiang province, the ruins of Liangzhu are evidence of Chinese civilization dating back at least 5,000 years and are listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since 20, researchers have been excavating sites south of Liangzhu, including Beixun, Fanuanshan, and Nanawan Miao. In one of these sites, archaeologists discovered a tomb containing rich funerary items, including jade jewelry, belonging to a woman of high social status. During excavations around the ruins of Liangzhu, about 20 ancient dams were found, which were part of the water supply system. These discoveries confirm the complexity and high level of development of ancient Chinese civilization. One thing is impossible to understand. Where did hundreds of years of our history go? Sometimes it seems that thousands of years ago ancient civilizations were very developed and at some point development stopped or even rolled back. What do you think about this? A giant creature with hundreds of legs. Scientists have created an amazing reconstruction of the appearance of Arthur Pleura, a giant centipede that lived on Earth 300 million years ago. This creature was about 2.6 meters long, 0.5 meters wide, and weighed approximately 50 kilograms, making it the largest centipede to ever live. The first fossil remains of Arthur Pleura were discovered 170 years ago, but a complete skeleton was not found until five years ago, allowing scientists from the universities of Leicester and Bristol to better understand the anatomy of this creature. Experts suggest that the high levels of oxygen in the atmosphere at that time contributed to the achievement of gigantic sizes not only by Arthropleura, but also by other arthropods, such as giant dragonflies and cockroaches. Ancient centipedes, like their modern descendants, were almost blind and had only basic vision, sufficient to navigate light levels. Aeneas Water Telegraph Far beyond telephones and television, telecommunications have ancient roots. One of the earliest methods of transmitting messages over a distance was the use of smoke with different colors. In ancient Greece, around 350 BC, Aeneas Tacticus is credited with the invention of the water telegraph. The system consisted of two cans of water and a stick with messages. When the signal was sent, both people opened the taps and the floating sign showed the same message. In Britain, Francis Wishow created a more complex water-based system that transmitted messages through changes in water pressure. Despite its innovation, the system did not catch on. These ancient methods, although seemingly outdated, are the forerunners of modern communication technologies and are a reminder of humanity's constant desire for better communication. A Shulian Chopper with Fossilized Clam a unique hand chopper was found in England dating back to the Acheulean era, about 1.95 million years ago. This artifact is interesting because of the fossilized mollusk on its surface. Scientists from the University of Cambridge examined it and came to the conclusion that the tool is no different in shape and manufacturing method from other Acheulean hand choppers discovered in Britain. The dimensions of the hand chopper are 13 by 8 by 3.5 centimeters. It was previously assumed that the ancient master left the mollusk fossil because of its aesthetic value. However, the researchers believe that it would be impossible to do this due to the fragility of the chopper material. Fast Dragons Scientists from an international team discovered in Mongolia the remains of a unique species of dinosaurs that were distinguished by an unusual sleeping position reminiscent of modern birds. 
These fossils, dating back 71 million years, were found in the Barungayo Formation in the Gobi Desert. It was previously assumed that the finds belonged to flightless birds of the family of small theropods Alvasauridae, but careful analysis of the bones allowed scientists to reclassify the remains as Maniraptor dinosaurs. The scientific community even gave them a new name, Jackalinkus yarui, which means fast tiny dragon. These dinosaurs measured about 1 meter in height and weighed approximately 30 kilograms. A giant complex of ancient settlements Using modern technology, archaeologists from University College Dublin, together with Serbian and Slovenian colleagues, have made a significant discovery. They discovered many previously unknown Bronze Age settlements in the southern Carpathian Basin near Serbia. Analysis of satellite images and aerial photography made it possible to reconstruct the ancient landscape and discover a network of megaforts, huge prehistoric structures. These megaforts, previously known from sites such as Gradis Teos, Kanad Palo, Santana and Kanesiakuri were previously considered isolated. However, new research has shown that they actually form a complex network. In its heyday, tens of thousands of people could live here. These sites, located along the Tessa River, were discovered in an area where almost all settlements are within 5 kilometers of each other. Scholars believe that local communities interacted peacefully with each other and were important centers in Europe during the Mycenaean, Hittite and New Kingdom Egyptian eras. The Mystery of a Vanished Ancient Roman City Archaeologists in Italy have made an impressive discovery at the site of the ancient Roman city of Clatorna, known as the Pompeii of the North. Over 3,000 coins and 50 gems were discovered on the territory of this forgotten city, many of which are decorated with images of the deities of ancient Rome. This place, according to the Deputy Minister of Culture of Italy, is magical. Previously, a forum, mosaic streets and Roman bath were found here, and now excavations have yielded thousands of silver and bronze coins as well as precious stones engraved with deities and architectural elements. Notable among the coins is the Quinarium, a rare silver coin from the Roman Republic dating back to 97 BC, which helps establish the age of the finds. It depicts a winged Nike on a shield, which may symbolize military victories and connections with Roman power. Scholars believe that Clitorina was not just a city but also a center of pilgrimage and trade with close ties to Rome. There may have been a workshop in the city that produced coins and gems with unique engravings. Scythian Bone Scepter During archaeological excavations in Bulgaria, an unusual object was discovered – a scepter made of bone, presumably belonging to a Scythian commander of the 5th century BC. The discovery was made by a team of archaeologists led by Professor Vasily Nikolov in the northeastern part of the country and shed light on the history of the Scythians, a nomadic people who traveled through the territory of modern Bulgaria. The Scythians were known for their unique way of life and cultural characteristics, and the discovery of, of a scepter in a rare burial adds to knowledge about this mysterious people. The grave, which resembles the shape of a boot with a cutout, has been previously excavated but has not been studied until now. The found scepter, 39 centimeters long, consisting of two connected parts of bone, demonstrates the excellent skill of Scythian artisans. On one side, it is decorated with an image of an eagle's beak, and on the other, with an anthropomorphic image of a man. Such artifacts, decorated with elements in the form of birds, especially the eagle, had special significance in the religious life of the Scythians. This artifact highlights the military and spiritual history of the Scythians, their respect for their ancestors, and their ability to create complex products that preserve cultural traditions. Celtic Village and Roman Settlement Archaeological Breakthrough in Munich On the northern outskirts of the German metropolis, scientists have stumbled upon an amazing discovery. The remains of an ancient Celtic village, dating back two and a half thousand years, and traces of Roman settlers. The village, flourishing during the era of the Celtic civilization of Latin, was home to our ancestors right up to the first millennium AD. And now, while digging for a new residential area, archaeologists have discovered houses from that era, whose outlines we see as mysterious circles on the ground. At the very center of the settlement stood an imposing building surrounded by wooden structures resembling colonnades. 
possibly a gathering place for the local community. Archaeologists also found different types of dwellings and evidence that the inhabitants lived in half-timbered houses. The amazing cemeteries of this era, with evidence from Celtic and Roman times, make us understand that this area was inhabited and rich for many centuries. Each ceramic plate, jug with intact handle, drinking vessel made of soapstone, and even the rare sickle from the barrels tell stories of days long gone. Axe over 200,000 years old Archaeologists in Saudi Arabia have unearthed a basalt axe which is now being studied to understand its purpose. A tool dating back more than 200,000 years was found in the Alula area. The find was made near an ancient settlement rich in archaeological treasures. The city of Kirk, also known as Al Mabiyat, has a rich history and attractions dating back to different eras. The tool discovered by the Teos Heritage team measures more than half a meter in length and shows signs of being used for chopping. Careful analysis is ongoing to determine its role in the lives of ancient people. Skeleton of a woman without a face in Germany, archaeologists discovered a mysterious burial from the 9th century. The man lay unharmed, but the wife's facial bones were not preserved, and no funerary objects were found next to her. Excavations were carried out near Eisleben, on the site where the royal palace of Helfte was once located. The woman's height was one and a half meters, but her skeleton had a defect. Her face has been hollowed out. The man apparently held an important position, perhaps he was a high-ranking official or a military man, as confirmed by the objects found on him – a knife, a belt, and parts of an official staff. At the same time, no accessories were found on the woman, which became especially interesting for researchers. Felix Spearman from Saxony Anhalt suggests that the woman could be a Christian, while her husband still adhered to pagan traditions. This could explain the lack of funerary objects, since the Christian tradition rejected early decorations after death. Miner's Shocking Discovery Sometimes miners come across unusual artifacts that can surprise even archaeologists. In 2008, an unusual discovery was made in the Zapadne mine in Donetsk, Rostov region, at a depth of 900 meters. A wheel imprint was found in sandstones dating back to the Carboniferous period, 360-300 million years ago. Mine informant Kasatkin, who worked in the mine, shared photographs of the find. According to him, at the mine, classified as dangerous due to the risk of sudden releases of coal and gas, management banned exploration of the site and ordered work to be accelerated. As a result, another smaller print discovered later was not recovered for study. Kasatkin claimed that the mine, which was closed and flooded in 2009, yielded other amazing finds, including the imprints of giant snakes and possibly winged lizards. He also mentioned other unusual finds in coal mines around the world, including a stone block wall and hieroglyphs. These stories, despite their fantastic nature, make us think about the possibility of the existence of ancient civilizations that we do not yet know about. Such discoveries can open new horizons for archaeology and history, although official science often ignores such evidence, considering it minor tales. What do you think? Can these mysterious finds really be evidence of ancient civilizations, or are they just coincidences? Write your opinion in the comments. Nazis and Caligula's Boat once again, debates are flaring up online about the legendary boats of the Roman Emperor Caligula. Researchers claim that the Nazis did not destroy them. These two luxurious Caligula boats, built on Lake Nami south of Rome, were known for their elaborate decorations, including mosaics, statues, and jewelry. After being raised from the bottom in the 1930s, their fate came to a tragic end during World War II. It was long believed that the Nazis destroyed the boats in 1944, but a new book, The Burning of Lake Nami Boats, offered offers a different perspective on the events. According to the book, responsibility for the destruction of the boats lies with an American artillery unit that shelled the Lake Nami area during the battles in Italy. The museum's caretaker claimed that the fire that destroyed the boats was not related to the shelling and blamed the Germans for burning the boats as an act of revenge. However, the authors of the book claimed that four American shells pierced the roof of the museum, which led to a fire that broke out two hours after the shelling. This conclusion is supported by the fact that other wooden buildings that were bombed also burned down during this period. Until this time, the US military tried to hide its participation in the destruction of valuable historical artifacts. Caligula's boats represented unique evidence of the naval architecture and construction technologies of antiquity. Curse of Carlisle 
At the center of the underground passage in the city of Carlisle is a 14-ton granite boulder. The cursed stone, as it is called, was installed as a part of the new millennium celebrations in 2001. Hundreds of words are engraved on the stone, part of a curse composed in 1525 by Archbishop Dunbar of Glasgow to ward off the ravers who pillaged along the borders of England and Scotland. Following the stone's installation, press coverage included floods, a foot and mouth epidemic, a large fire in the city and a terrible season for the local football team, all of which occurred just a few years after the stone's placement. Opponents of the stone, including a local councillor, demanded its removal, citing a curse. The local White Witch stated that removing the stone would only acknowledge the reality of the curse and therefore increase its power. Tomb of Senenmut Senenmut, who served as chief architect and royal advisor to Queen Hatshepsut, left a significant mark on the history of ancient Egypt. Although some sources claim that there may have been a love relationship between him and the queen, the authenticity of these rumors remains unknown. However, the tomb of Senenmut, located not far from the burial places of Hatshepsut and her husband, testifies to his high status and proximity to the royal house. The tomb is surprisingly well preserved to this day, and archaeologists discovered a strict curse in it. The following warning was curved on the walls. Anyone who harms my image will be denied the right to follow the king of his time, will not be buried in the western cemetery, and his life will not be recognized on this earth. Curse of Braganza the royal house of Braganza ruled Portugal and its overseas possessions from 1640 to 1910. The Braganza family curse is perhaps one of the most famous in European history and is mentioned in many historical documents. According to the history of the curse, it began during the reign of King John IV of Portugal, who reigned from 1640 to 1656. It is said that King John attacked the Franciscan friar who approached him asking for alms. The young king pushed the old man away and ordered him to to get out. The angry monk then placed a curse on the king, saying that every firstborn of his royal line would die before ascending the throne. The curse came true. All but three of the firstborn men of the house of Braganza died before they could become kings. The oldest parcel has found its addressee. In 1913, the 20-year-old son of a Berlin baker decided to test how far a bottle thrown into the Baltic Sea could float. Inside, he placed two stamps and a postcard with a request to, re to return it if found. A hundred years later, in 2014, Conrad Fisher from Kiel found this bottle while fishing. Inside were stamps and a worn postcard from Richard Platz. After investigation, it was possible to contact Platz's granddaughter, Angela Erdman, for whom this message became an important family artifact. This bottle became part of the exhibition at the Hamburg Museum. The chances that it would survive at sea seemed slim, but a miracle happened. The history of bottle mail goes back to antiquity. According to legend, the Greek philosopher Theoprasus in 310 BC used it to prove the connection between the Atlantic and Mediterranean seas. In Britain, until the 18th century, it was considered a crime to break such bottles and read their contents. And what about you? Have you ever found a letter in a bottle or sent one yourself? Share in the comments below the video. Ancient Curse Tablets at the bottom of a two and a half thousand year old well in the Keramikos district of Athens, archaeologists have discovered 30 ancient curses engraved on lead tablets. With the help of tags on tablets, people in ancient times called upon the gods of the underworld to harm other people. These curses were ritual tags, usually scratched into small lead objects. The ancient Greeks were known to engrave curses on tablets and place them in wells or graves to curse someone with whom they had a serious disagreement. At a certain time in Athens, it was forbidden to place cursed tablets into graves, but villains came up with a strategy to secretly throw their curses into wells. In the well, archaeologists discovered many artifacts and water vessels, as well as coins and food remains. Since water, especially drinking water, was considered sacred, it was believed that every well was had a nymph who protected the water, and angering this nymph could have serious consequences. Therefore, small vessels of liquids and other gifts were thrown into the the well to please these emotionally unstable deities. A unique product in the capital of the ancient kingdom. 
Archaeologists in the ancient city of Hattusa, the capital of the Hittite kingdom, discovered a unique object decorated with ivory about 2,800 years old. The discovery was made near the Turkish village of Bogaskali, where archaeological excavations have continued for more than a hundred years, often leading to the discovery of ancient artifacts. The found artifact made of ivory measures approximately 30 centimeters in length and 10 centimeters in width. It stands out for its grace and includes images of a sphinx a lion and the so-called trees of life. It is believed that this item was used as a decoration for a wooden box or furniture. The artifact is broken on both sides, but the upper and lower parts are preserved in their original form, which suggests that it was originally longer. This discovery provides new insight into the artistic and cultural aspects of the Hittite kingdom and provides insight into the skill and talent of ancient artisans. Extremely rare coin Archaeologists from the Hebrew University have discovered the remains of a building from the Second Temple period, destroyed in 70 AD in the awful neighborhood of Jerusalem. Numerous Jewish coins from the Great Revolt were discovered at the site, including a rare silver half-shackle coin dated approximately 6970. The Great Revolt was a response to increasing religious pressure and heavy taxes from Rome, which led to a massive uprising of the Jewish population. The rebels overran the Roman garrison, forcing the pro-Roman king Herod Agrippa II to flee the city. During the Great Revolt, Jews minted coins with the image of a cup and inscriptions in Hebrew. The the minting of silver coins was a political statement and a symbol of the desire for national liberation from Roman rule. Half-shekel coins were used to pay the annual temple tax. Neolithic Obsidian on November 20, Naples police recovered a processed piece of obsidian at a depth of more than 30 meters off the coast of Capri, Italy. The artifact weighing 8 kilograms and measuring 28 by 20 by 15 centimeters, found near the famous White Grotto, is believed to be part of the cargo from a sunken Neolithic ship. The search continues. Researchers hope to find other debris and possibly fragments of the ship. Obsidian, a volcanic glass, was used in the Neolithic to create tools and cutting tools. At the end of the 19th century, a cache of obsidian blocks and more than 800 obsidian items about 7,000 years old were discovered in Capri. Analysis showed that they were from Luperi, a volcanic island off Sicily. This indicates ancient trade between the islands. There are only 23 of these in the world. Archaeologists in Turkey have found unique artifacts about 800 years old in Hasenkiv, one of the oldest settlements in Batman. Among them are a rare healing bowl and two archery rings, Zinkhus, made of agate and bone. The healing cup, one of only 23 of its kind in the world, was used in the medieval Islamic world to protect against the bites of animals such as dogs, snakes, and scorpions. It is made of bronze, decorated with talismans, seals, and poems. This speaks volumes about the traditional medicine practice practices of the time. Zikos, archery rings, prevented the fingers from being damaged by the bowstring. One of them was found near the shrine, which gives it special significance. These finds now have been transferred to the Hasenkiv Museum and represent important evidence of ancient practices and beliefs, highlighting the cultural characteristics of the Islamic world associated with traditional medicine and archery. Who left this mark? In Morocco, archaeologists have discovered 85 ancient traces of human feet dating back to approximately 90.3 thousand years ago. These are the oldest footprints in North Africa and one of the oldest footprints of Homo sapiens. The discovery was made near the port city of Larache in northwestern Morocco. Researchers found prints running in lengths from 12.7 to 30 centimeters in an area of about 2,800 square meters. These footprints indicate that they were made by people running in height from 121 to 189 centimeters, most of whom were taller than 140 centimeters. The tracks belong to at least five individuals, two children, a teenager or young adult, and two adults. One of the adults was probably a man. To determine the age of the prince, the method of optically stimulated luminescence was used. The Secret of the Cursed Garden not only ancient artifacts and inscriptions can carry curses. Deep in the Armenian mountains, in an abandoned valley, a mysterious garden has been discovered, which archaeologists estimate is more than 800 years old. 
According to ancient local legends, each plant in this garden has its own curse, imposed by a once powerful magician. The garden abounds in rare plants, some of which are not found in other parts of the world. Scientists and botanists are puzzled as to how these species could survive for so long without human care. Locals, meanwhile, avoid this place, telling stories of strange accidents befalling those who trespass on the garden's plants. The mystery of the cursed garden in Armenia is of keen interest both among researchers and among lovers of mysticism. However, so far archaeologists are in no hurry to study this area, because in addition to plants, there should also be archaeological artifacts that belong to the ancient people who lived there and cursed this place. Inscription from the Necropolis of Sheikh Abdel Kurna Sheikh Abdel Kurna, an ancient necropolis in Luxor, Egypt, is famous for its tombs with inscriptions intended to deter robbers. The National Museum of Scotland houses a unique slab with one of these tags. It says, pass by and don't touch even the slightest stone here. If you come across this stone, do not step over it. Know that the gods harassing the mountains are gaining strength every day, despite the fact that their stones are carried away. Written in hieratic script, the this warning states that removing even one stone from the tomb will anger the gods and spirits of the departed. However, given that the slab was moved to Scotland without apparent consequences, it seems that the ancient warning may not be taken seriously. Busby's Stoop Chair at Thirsk Museum in North Yorkshire, an old wooden chair with a dark history hangs on the wall. This ominous object is known as the Busby's Stoop Chair or the Dead Man's Chair. They say that this damned chair brings death to those who dare to sit on it. In 1702, Thomas Busby was convicted of murder. According to one version, he was arrested in a local tavern where he was sitting on his favorite chair. At the time of his arrest, Busby cursed it. Over time, the old Busby pups seat began to be linked to the untimely death of those who sat on it. For example, several Canadian pilots sat on this chair during World War II and were soon killed in bombing raids. Although mortality among wartime pilots was already high, several fatal car accidents and other tragic deaths in the 1970s were directly linked to stool. Eventually, the pub owner donated it to the museum to prevent further tragedies. The Curse of Amen Hotep's Tomb in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt lies the tomb of Amenhotep, shrouded in dark legends. An ominous inscription is carved on the walls of the tomb, warning of dire consequences for those who dare to disturb the peace of the pharaoh's eternal sleep. According to the curse, any robber will lose his earthly wealth, die in the sea waves, burn in flames, leave no descendants, be deprived of burial and die of hunger. In addition, the bones of the intruder are threatened with destruction, foreshadowing a terrifying fate in the afterlife. And this is only part of the terrible predictions. Other horrors await anyone who dares to disturb the pharaoh. Of course, there were no officially documented deaths associated with these curses. For now, would you dare to visit this tomb? Write in the comments under the video. Tomb of Heavenly Prince Recently, scientists made a sensational discovery near the city of Sanyan, China, where they found a long 147-meter tunnel at a depth of 10 meters with a hidden burial place. Within Sanyan, archaeologists have discovered the final resting place of Emperor Xia Mendai of the Northern Zhou Dynasty, who ruled the territory of northern China from 557 to 581 AD. Interestingly, Xia Mendai abandoned the usual royal title, preferring the title of Havel only prince to the honorary title of the Zhou dynasty. His reign was overshadowed by internecine feud with his cousin Yu and Hu, which ended in the death of the emperor. The mystery of the emperor's tomb, designated M655, was revealed during archaeological work near the airport road in Senyan. The tomb has an elongated shape with an orientation along the north-south axis and contains numerous funeral attributes inside, including ceramic vessels, figurines of warriors and cavalry, a statue of a camel, and figures of mythical creatures. In addition, they found epitaph stone, bears an inscription confirming the identity of the deceased as Konju Wenju, Duke of Leon of the Zhou dynasty, better known as Emperor Sao Mendai. This discovery adds new details to the historical portrait of the ruler. The Forgotten King of Britain 
In the county of Hampshire in the UK, enthusiastic researcher Liu Fudge found a coin that could make adjustments to the history of the country. The coin reveals the name of an unknown Iron Age leader, Asenertus, who supposedly ruled from Danbury Fortress. This discovery is considered one of the most important in recent years. The initial estimate of the coin was about $5,000, but at the Sphinx auction, it was sold for $25,500. The coin was minted between 50 and 30 BC and corresponds to the time of Julius Caesar's first invasion of Britain. Although the Romans had to retreat due to Celtic resistance and rough seas, the event remained in history. On the obverse of the coin, there is a Latin inscription with the name Esenertus, an image of Apollo and other symbols. The reverse is decorated with the image of a horse with unusual elements and amulets. The discovery of the coin cast lights on the period before the Roman conquest of Britain, given special value to this era. Gregory Edmund of Spanx Auctions expressed expressed his admiration for the find, calling it an outstanding example of art of the time and pointing out the importance of the Latin text in understanding the cultural connections of the Iron Age. This object sheds light on a previously unknown ruler, expanding the understanding of history. Medieval Stone Grenades in the vicinity of Beijing, archaeologists stumble upon 59 stone shells from the reign of the Ming Dynasty, which earned fame for its progress in military technology. The Ming era was distinguished by the invention of original weapons, including mobile explosive devices such as bats, fire bricks, as well as various types of fireballs. Made from stone or metal, these explosive devices could be thrown by hand or by siege engines. Recently discovered grenades at the Great Wall of China in the battling area are stone balls with holes for filling with gunpowder, indicating their use by the Ming Dynasty military for defense. These powdered charges, once loaded and sealed, created a powerful explosion striking the enemy with shrapnel. This artifact provides further evidence of the amazing technological advances and military inventions of ancient China, and also illustrates the uniqueness and diversity of the early developments of gunpowder weapons used to defend the legendary Wall of China. New Giant Pyramid a giant underground pyramid gun in Padan has been discovered in Indonesia, surpassing Stonehenge and the pyramids of Giza in antiquity. This place, shrouded in mystery and considered sacred by local residents of the island of West Java, is known as the Pandan Berendak, the Step Pyramid. Archaeological work has only just begun, but has already shown that Gunan Patan may be the oldest pyramidal structure in the world, created on top of an extinct volcano before the advent of agriculture. New research suggests there may be chambers full of the unknown inside the hill. The name Mountain of Enlightenment emphasizes that an ancient civilization could have turned a volcanic hill into the base of a pyramid many millennia ago. Radiocarbon dating shows that construction began around the last ice age, making it older than 16 years ago. Ago and possibly even 27 years ago, putting it on par with Göbekli Tepe in age. Between 2011 and 2005, a team conducted a comprehensive analysis using drilling and seismic surveys. They found that Gun and Patton was built in several stages. While exploring the interior of the hill, scientists discovered signs of hidden chambers, some of which reach 15 meters in length and 10 meters in height, which confirms the uniqueness and mystery of this ancient structure. Hundreds of Silesian Bracteates in the Polish city of Sprotava, archaeologists have found a unique 14th-century treasure containing from 100 to 150 silver Silesian bracteates. The excavations were carried out on the territory where the burger site was previously located, a narrow plot of land with a house with a small frontage to the street. Researchers have discovered the remains of a textile bag containing ancient coins that were minted mainly between 1250 and 1300. These thin plate coins were characteristic of Silesian Alicia in the 13th century, but by the beginning of the 14th century they began to be replaced by thicker coins. The origin of these coins lies in the coin workshops in Silesia, where their use was short due to regular withdrawals. People traded four old coins for three new ones, with the fourth coin held as a tax for the mint master. This prevented hoarding as the coins lost their value over time. It is assumed that the treasury could have belonged to a relatively wealthy person. The find is considered one of the most significant in the region, given the rarity of the surviving bracteates, most of them were melted down for other uses. Collection of Coins and Swords 
In Mecklenburg, Germany, volunteer archaeologists made an amazing discovery. A treasure of seven Bronze Age swords and a 6,000th collection of silver coins from the 11th century. The finds were made on the site of a former Burga site. The seven swords, which scientists have dated back 3,000 years, are unique artifacts from the Bronze Age. The peculiarity is their number in one place, which is rare in this region. Assembling swords from fragments opens up new perspectives in the study of ancient rituals and sacrifices. An impressive collection of 6,000 silver coins stored in a clay pot was discovered in Rügen. These coins come from a variety of places, including West Germany, England, Denmark, Hungary and the modern Czech Republic, indicating extensive trade connections of the time. In the Mecklenburg Lake District, volunteers found a 900-year-old reliquary vessel used to store religious objects. The pot contained, among other things, neck rings, rings, a pearl necklace with golden stones, and two containers for relics. Funeral Packages and Masks in Peru, at the archaeological site of Pachacamac near Lima, more than 70 funeral bundles from the Wari culture dating back to around 200 AD were found. These finds reveal the secrets of ancient civilization. Pachacamac, rich in pyramids, plazas, and cemeteries, preserves the history of the Wari people. Researchers discovered funeral bundles from 800-1100 AD near the temple. They contain unique masks carved from wood and ceramics, which were typical for rituals. Archaeologists also found staffs with images of Wari decorated with shells from Ecuador. These objects are associated with the staff god important to the spiritual life of the Wari. These discoveries are important for understanding the cultural and religious world of the ancient Andes and their funerary traditions. Found the place where the Book of Deer was written. Archaeologists in Scotland have discovered a long-lost monastery that is about a thousand years old. The site appears to be associated with the creation of the Book of Deer, one of the oldest surviving copies of Gaelic writing. The Book of Deer is a unique 10th-century collection of gospel texts containing records in Latin, Old Irish, and Gaelic, now housed in the Cambridge University Library. It contains the Gospel of John, fragments of other gospels, as well as historically significant records written in Gaelic. The site where the monastery once stood is located in Aberdeenshire, near the village of Mentlow. Archaeologists suggest that it was here that the unique records of the book were created, and excavations in 2022 confirmed this assumption. The excavation site uncovered post holes dating from the same period as the Gaelic entries in the book. In addition, finds include medieval pottery, glass shards, personal items and game boards, indicating the existence of a monastery complex here. Where have all the trees gone? I will tell you about the importance of protecting our nature using the example of one island. Easter Island, located in the Southeast Pacific Ocean and famous for its unique statues, appears to us in a completely different light today. This island was once covered with lush green forest, but with the arrival of man, it lost its original appearance. The first inhabitants of the island were the Polynesians, who settled here despite the distance from the nearest continent, Chile. At one time, the population of the island reached 15,000 people, which, with its area of 160 square kilometers, amounted to 94 people per square kilometer. The main environmental disaster for the island was the deforestation of the unique palm trees Pachalacocos desperta. Gradually, settlers destroyed the forest to make way for agriculture and canoe building. With deforestation, soil erosion began, which led to its impoverishment and degradation, completely depriving the island of fertility. After deforestation, the soil left in place became fragile and vulnerable to tropical rainfall, losing nutrients. This resulted in Easter Island losing most of its endemic species, with the exception of the Sedge Scorpus californicus. Today we have before us an example of how a careless attitude towards nature can lead to irreversible consequences. However, work on reforestation has already begun on Easter Island, which gives hope for its revival. Ancient Paintings of UFOs Recently, scientists often come across images of circles and triangles on the walls of ancient temples and caves. It may seem mundane, but the presence of flying objects in medieval religious paintings is surprising. I will show you nine paintings that, according to ufologists, depict alien objects. The Annunciation with Saint Emidius, 1486. 
painting by Carlo Crivelli. The ray of light from heaven in the picture is traditionally interpreted as a divine broadcast, but some ufologists see a UFO in this image. The Crucifixion of Christ 1350 Painting from the Serbian monastery of Vaisiki Dekani. The picture shows two objects in the air that look similar to aircraft. The official version says that these are the moon and the sun, although in the Christian tradition they are not deified. The Ascension of Christ 1710 The work of Arne de Gelder stored in Cambridge. It depicts a disc-shaped object illuminating John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Some believe that the artist may have conveyed hidden knowledge about UFOs. Madonna was Saint Giovannino, 15th century, author Domenico Ghirlandaio. The painting shows a flying object above the Madonna's shoulder, which is pointed at by a man with a dog. Tapestry Triumph of Summer, 1538, created in Bruges, kept in the Bavarian Museum in Germany. The tapestry depicts three disc-shaped objects, which ufologists interpret as UFOs. The Miracle of Snow, 1428-1432 Work by Massolino de Panicol. The painting depicts an event from 4th century Rome where disc-shaped objects are visible in the air. Israel Trusts in the Lord, 17th century Painting from the Dominican monastery in Siasoera, Transylvania. It shows a giant disc-shaped object above a burning church. Glorification of the Sacrament of the Eucharist, 1600, author Bonaventura Salambani. The painting depicts Jesus Christ and God the Father with a globe, which some researchers interpret as a time control panel. The Crucifixion of Christ, 17th century, kept in the Swedish Kavshali Temple in Amskata, Georgia. On the sides of the cross, there are objects with human faces, which ufologists consider to be confirmation of the extraterrestrial origin of Jesus Christ. As you may have noticed, all these paintings were painted in completely different parts of the planet, but the objects are to some extent similar to each other. Funeral Ring with the Eye of the Diseased this unique Victorian ring, created in the late 19th century, has the unusual feature of using the glass eye of the diseased as a centerpiece. Dr. Lindsay Fitzharris says the first artificial eyes appeared in the 15th century and were made of gold with colored animal trim. By the 16th century, Venetian craftsmen had discovered a new way of making artificial eyes from glass that could be inserted into the eye socket. Although the first glass prosthesis quite rough, uncomfortable and brittle, the Venetian method was considered the best in the world at that time. By the mid-19th century, craftsmen from the Thuringian region of Germany made the breakthrough by perfecting the glass formula to create artificial eyes that were of better quality. However, in the 1940s, glass gave way to plastic, which was less uncomfortable and more durable. Five Mummies in Peru in Peru, archaeologists have made an amazing discovery. Five mummies that are more than a thousand years old and an ancient staircase estimated to be five and a half thousand years old. These finds were discovered near the Rimac River in the province of Lima, at the archaeological site of La Florida. The mummies are believed to include four children and one adult. The mummies are planned to be removed from the excavation site by the end of 2023 for more detailed study. Archaeologists intend to analyze tissues found in funeral bundles along with mummies. No less interesting is the discovery of an ancient staircase, five and a half thousand years old. This artifact is a valuable evidence of ancient engineering and architecture of those times. Times. Civilization Rescue Machine Archaeologists from the British Museum have made a surprising discovery in the Iraqi city of Gursu, which they called the Advanced Technology of the Ancient Sumerians. It turns out that the structure, previously thought to be a temple, is actually a water canal built more than 4,000 years ago. Modern researchers have found that this canal was created by the Sumerians as a means of combating drought. Archaeologists describe this ancient structure as a kind of trench for delivering water to the fields. However, this was not just an irrigation structure but a complex system that researchers call a drought-fighting machine. Architect and ecologist Ibru Turin notes the uniqueness of the find as such technologies were considered possible only in the 18th century. This design was of great importance as a way to combat the water crisis of the time. The canal structure consisted of two symmetrical mud brick structures. Their length was about 40 meters, widths 10 meters, and the walls reached a height of 3.5 meters. The discovery device was located on a 19 kilometer a long canal that crossed the body of water, which also allows it to be considered the oldest known bridge in the world. 
Woman in the Siberian Necropolis a unique find was discovered on the edge of the Arctic. A single woman resting in a male necropolis buried in a cocoon made of copper and fur. This mysterious 12th century woman, belonging to an unknown hunted and fishing civilization of Siberia, has surprising connections to Persia. Her body was accidentally mummified and she was estimated to be around 35 years old. The woman's face shows a greenish tint from pieces of the copper teapot that helped preserve her in the permafrost. She has long eyelashes, full hair and a impressive teeth. Next to the skull they found bronze temple rings wrapped in an animal skin, possibly deer, and birch bark which was used to wrap the mummy. Like other remains, the mummy's legs point toward the Gorni Pali River, which scientists believe has religious significance. The copper mummy is the first discovery of an adult woman in this ancient cemetery. Many analyses will be carried out, including DNA, by Russian and South Korean scientists. Support this video with your thumbs up and kind comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so before. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!